Okay, done with the cutoff saw. We're starting to route the exhaust this morning. We're going to prefab some of those elbows and runs. And what I wanted to show you this morning is I was doing some due diligence. This is the inspection manual for our uh, vehicle, and I do go through these. Uh, so wherever, what state, whatever province you guys are in, I would recommend that you do get try to borrow one of these or get a hold of it to make sure whatever you're doing does meet safety standards. Let me show you an example of what we're going to deal with today. So here's the kind of things that they look for when rejecting a truck. So we have to make sure we meet these or don't have any of these issues. So of course we're doing new exhaust so we've got you know nothing loose, nothing leaking. It's all going to be very secure. But here are the tolerances I was talking about. Uh, the distances and clearances I've got to have keeping the exhaust system away from the fuel. And also here's another one that was new. Um, these things do change over time, so make sure you're dealing with current uh, current regulations here in Alberta. Anyways, we'll see. You know, you need to check out your own state and your own province, but they want to make sure that the exhaust fumes are ex uh, the exhaust is expelled beyond the perimeter of the cab or, cab or sleeper. So we'll have to make sure that we meet that requirement with our uh, exhaust routing today. It's kind of like adult Lego. Yeah. Mega clan. Guys, we're doing the last few wiring touch-ups and I want to show you what uh, I consider, and Kevin agrees, is a really good best practice. Never do any wire connections without heat shrink. And we're doing it twice. So certainly these crimp connectors have heat shrink of their own. But as well, we're also going to be using another set of heat shrink with some nice adhesive on the inside right over top of that to make sure that it's sealed well and that it never uh, gets any moisture or corrosion in there. And lastly, when you use your black heat shrink, it adds a nicer touch from it. You go from having wiring that looks like this, yeah, we end up with something that doesn't look like the rainbow of colors back here. It's all black. Looks nice. Okay, it's time for fenders. We're going to line those up. I also want to point out that I've got an uh, engineered spacer that I tend to use up underneath those fenders to get them just resting, known as a 2x12. Using two of them results in the fender resting. It can't rock. It's nice and solid this way. And it lets us line up those mounting pipes right up against the frame. You'll see that this one's been marked. We're gonna put in the uh, center of that and start drilling it. Before I tighten up these fenders, I wanted to talk to you about how I like to space these above the wheels. Now the first thing to remember when you're doing your own fenders is you want to make sure that you have the truck completely aired down before you put the fenders on. You want to make sure that when we run out of air that these fenders aren't going to get pushed up by the wheels. Now I showed you how I use usually 2x12s to get the right height above the wheel. Now this truck, because it's going to Texas, uh, I find those 2x12s work well. If I was spacing this for use in Canada, of course we have something called snow. 
and a lot of the trucks that we carry would have chains. So I would look to put a 4x4 in there so that I would have enough space when aired down. In the event of an emergency, I could get my hands and my arms up in here to get my chains around the wheels. So just an idea on how to space these fenders uh, given different conditions and different use. Well, we've made some really good progress today. I'm just going to zoom in on some of the things that we've taken care of. We've uh, finished dealing with our auto greaser. There was a, a line that came off there that greased the fifth, commercial fifth wheel hitch. Didn't need that, so that's been capped off. So all of our lines have been dealt with. They've been attached in along the side of the frame. Of course, our drive line has been installed. The brake pot you can see there on the left-hand side. And... Of course, our leveler, we're going to be doing a little bit of adjusting on that. Uh, and we get the air running towards the, to the truck here in us, probably in the next day. After we get that air compressor going, of course. Now, backing up, we got the fenders installed. So those are really going to be a temporary solution. Those came with the truck. You might remember the early pictures. Those are a plastic fender. They're supposed to be really, really tough. And it's in a aired down stage now so when the, that airs up those are going to lift pretty evenly and they should match the curvature of the wheels and because Jack is putting a smart car loader on here those ultimately will be coming off but I have to have fenders on a truck to be able to pace, pass the safety so that's why they've been put on we have finished our wiring it's been all tie wrapped up and attached to the frame so there's no places for it to go. We'll have to clean up a little bit of these metal shavings from the holes that we drilled. Oh, spare parts. So it's starting to look like a truck again. We also got our exhaust dealt with. So there's the DPF and of course the exhaust comes off. It runs up along the frame, across, a couple elbows. You can see that it's all wrapped there where it might reflect up or heat the bottom side of the sleeper. We fabricated right down here uh, and welded a new bracket that goes all the way across and bolts to the frame. A little dark in there, but so it's very well supported. And of course that points out and away from the truck. Exhaust is done.